All right. Good afternoon, guys. Appreciate you being on here. And uh, National Signing Day, really, I guess, 2021, even though uh, it's still 2020, but for the 2021 class, and obviously we're really excited. It's always good to bring in uh, new Trojans and add them to, to our roster, and we're really excited about this group. Um, I thought I'd give you kind of a rundown of the class first and then take questions after that. Uh, first of all, I want to thank our coaches. Uh, they did an unbelievable job, you know, helping assemble this staff. And, you know, it's so important to build that relationship with recruits and stay in contact. And, you know, it's been tougher than it's ever been with COVID and the ability not to get out on the road and go see these kids in person, uh, really having to do a lot of uh, Zoom calls and a lot of phone work and building those relationships. Although a lot of these uh, we've known for a long time before COVID. So I thought they did an outstanding job and, and I thought we addressed our needs and uh, we still have some, some things that are in the works that can still happen. Uh, we've left some room for that, but at the, at the same time, we're really excited about the class that we signed this morning. Also want to say a lot of these guys have been committed to us for a long time and uh, a testament to who they are and how much they love Troy. They, they, uh, you know, took us all the way to signing day and signed like they said they would. So that's always exciting. Um, you know, we signed 18 total today. Um, there might be another surprise or two as we move forward. Uh, you know, you got three days to finish. But, you know, by state, we signed nine guys from Alabama, which is always the priority for us to sign in-state kids that can play here. Uh, George, from Georgia, we signed five, Florida two, Louisiana one, Arkansas one. So. Uh, most, like I always say, most of our recruiting is done in that six-hour radius right here that, that there's players in this area. And I thought our coaches did a great job of evaluating and narrowing the things down. And I really am impressed with what we brought in today. By position, we signed four wide receivers, three running backs, two D tackles, two O linemen, a quarter, two quarterbacks, uh, one cornerback, one linebacker, one kicker, one safety, and one what we would call a bandit. So um, some people would call him a linebacker. but. You know, again, I think we addressed our needs, and, and uh, I'm really excited about this group. And I thought I'd just kind of briefly go through each one. They're in alphabetical order, so and then I'll take any questions you want. Uh, Lawson Chandler, 6'4", 320-pound offensive lineman for, from uh, Bainbridge, Georgia, Bainbridge High School. Um, he's, uh, I, he's really impressive, and, and really I, he fits us. He fits Troy, just getting to know this kid. Old-fashioned, blue-collar kind of guy. Rated as one of the top 160 offensive tackles in the country. Three-star by 247. Um, and just, you know, a guy that really, when we locked in on him and, and offered and he committed, uh, he just he was ecstatic to, to, to come to Troy. He just thought in his mind it was a great fit. He shut everything down. Really excited about him. And I think the future is really bright for him. Uh, next is Jamarcus Chapman, who's a 6'2", 275-pound defensive end tackle from – he actually a transfer from Florida State. Uh, he's from Rome, Georgia, originally Rome High School. Uh, he's a guy that that you know when he was at Florida State, he was on the ACC honor roll. So that's always exciting. Out of high school, he's a four-star prospect, 56, 56 top-ranked player in the state of Georgia, ranked 30th in the country at his position by rivals. So you know all those accolades from high school played at a big-time program there in Rome. Uh, they've done a great job. In fact, they won a state championship. Uh, and he was part of a big-time defense there at Rome that allowed like nine points a game. So uh, big-time player. Uh, we're excited to get him. That was an area of need we felt like for some depth issues. And uh, we're able to get him on board, and we're excited about that. Next is a receiver named Ollie Finch, who's a 6'2", 175-pound receiver from Etowah High School here in the state of Alabama. Uh, he finished his career with 325 receptions, which is amazing for about over 2,500 yards and 16 touchdowns. And, you know, he's a guy that also is a track guy, uh, which we always want to add speed to that, that position group. Played basketball in high school. Just a, just a really a, another blue-collar kind of guy. And, you know, our, our, our motto is TKG if we want Troy kind of guys. And, you know, I think these, these, these guys fit that. And, and definitely Ollie, uh, knowing where he's from. Uh, his high school coach is one as a former Trojan as well, uh, GA here. So excited about Ollie and what he's going to bring to the table. Next is a guy named Kyron Griffin Isom, who's 6'3", 175-pound wide receiver, uh, originally from hometown New Orleans, uh, actually went to high school in Tennessee. Interesting story. Played for a friend of mine in high school, uh, joined the Marines. He was not 6'3", at the time. He was kind of a shorter guy. Uh, spent seven years in the Marines, so he's a veteran. Uh, served our country. Uh, just a very impressive young man. Got out, went back to uh, junior college, and uh, obviously, we, we noticed him there. He caught 61 passes for like 750 yards uh, his freshman season, seven touchdowns out in California at Palomar College. 
Um, you know, he's a guy that's the number 10 ranked JUCO wide receiver in the country by 247. And obviously, you know, being a former – or, you know, I learned real quick from our chancellor, once you're a Marine, you're always a Marine. There, there are no former Marines, but it's just an amazing story. And it's a guy that I've been really impressed with, served uh, – a two-year deployment in his time there, and I think he's going to bring a lot of maturity to the to the uh, to that receiving core, and uh, so we're excited to get him. Next is the quarterback Quade Hawkins. He's from Bainbridge High School, also same place Lawson's from. Three-year starter. Uh, they're actually still playing. They're in the semifinals. Uh, he's a guy that can really throw the football. Three-star guy, all that good stuff. Ranked high, number 42 country uh, quarterback in the country. Um, Bainbridge is a is a place that is uh, very very similar to Troy, uh, blue collar kind of work uh, ethic there, and, and uh, they do a great job. Again, I mentioned they're in the semifinals in his career. He leads Bainbridge in every category, thrown for over five thousand yards and fifty touchdowns. Uh, just a, a really talented guy, and we're really excited to get him. And uh, hopefully, uh, wishing those guys the best of luck as he finishes his season. Next is an interesting guy named Peyton Higgins, who's. Uh, 5'10", 180 pound wide receiver from Mars Hill Bible School, which is in Florence, Alabama. Uh, this kid's kind of the do-it-all kid for Mars Hill. They, uh, they won a state championship twice in his career and got beat in the finals another year. Plays running back for them, but also catches the ball out of the backfield. Uh, and he came here in, into our camp last year when we were able to have camps and worked out at slot receiver for us. Uh, we think that's where he'll fit in our offense. Uh, finished his career with 100 total touchdowns and over 8,900 all-purpose yards. And his return ability, I think, is another thing that really attracted us to him and really just who he is. I used to work with his dad, and uh, uh, his dad's a high school coach, which anytime you get a coach's kid, those guys are just wired different. Um, but he's a very impressive young man. Uh, and like I mentioned, the return game, I think, is another element that he brings to the table and just a, just a great kid, really good academics, and uh, excited to get Peyton here on board. Philip Lee uh, is a bandit, 6'4", 215-pound bandit from Jacksonville, Florida, First Coast High School. Uh, finished his career uh, with 286 tackles, 240 of them solo, four block punch, two block field goals, five touchdowns. Uh, just really an athletic, long guy who plays very physical, which is what we need at that position. You know, he's going to play in the uh, he's going to play in the Georgia uh, Florida All Star game. I mean, he's a big time player. Uh, we had to hold off some guys to get him, and uh, just really excited about Philip. He stayed with us. I mean, from day one, um, like I mentioned, people came in and and really tried to 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 flip him here at the end, but he stayed true to us, and uh, just excited to get Philip and and uh, looking forward to getting him here on campus as as soon as we can. Next is a guy named Julian Peterson, six three, two hundred ninety pound ninety five pound defensive tackle from Pinson Valley High School. Uh, same place that Tez Johnson, we got him from last year. Uh, he recorded 55 tackles, five sacks, 10 and a half tackles for a loss, and an interception his senior year, and he plays the tackle. So that's pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, they won a state championship. He's actually won two now, and they won it this year. Uh, he was, they were combined 34 and six during his time there, and he set an AHSAA uh, record with 58 sacks, three-star kid by rivals. Uh, really, we needed a, a young D tackle who we thought could push the pocket some and, and be a presence in there. And I think we got that with Julian. We're really excited about him and looking forward to getting him here as well. Next is a quarterback a transfer um, for, named Taylor Powell from Missouri, 6'2", 210. Um, played at Missouri uh, for uh, the first part of his career. Um, I knew him in high school. He's from Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, recruited him when I was at another school. Um, he's played, I think, in 12 or 13 games in his career at Missouri. He backed up uh, last year when we went up there and played. Um, he backed up Kelly Bryant, came in and played against us. Uh, really a storied high school career, prep player of the year at Fayetteville High School, top 20 national prospect, uh, helped lead him to the 7A state championship, uh, named the MVP in the title game twice. Uh, he's, a, he's a guy that I think uh, is going to bring some, some competition to that room. Uh, you can never have enough good quarterbacks, uh, obviously. You know, you're gonna you, you, a guy gets injured, and and you, you can never have enough good players. And uh, we always want competition at that spot. Those quarterbacks, uh, they understand how that works. And uh, coaching that position now for I guess 22 years, um, you know, you never have enough. You need you need guys in that room that can operate the offense and um, be ready to go. Uh, so really excited to get him. I think he'll be a, a really good field. He, he'll fit into our team very well. And I know he's excited about getting here and competing and uh, looking forward to getting him here actually in January. So that'll be exciting. Next is Caleb Ransall. Uh, he's a six foot, 185 pound cornerback from Sparkman High School in Harvest, Alabama. Another Alabama kid, 32 tackles, two interceptions, 
25 pass breakups, fumble recovery, two forced fumbles. He did it all for that defense there at Sparkman. Uh, led them into the 7A playoffs again. Three-star, uh, number 100 player in the state of Alabama. Uh, committed to us back in the spring and never wavered. And that's always exciting when you got a, when you get a guy like that who's all in. I mean, he would send me text messages before games, after games, during the week, won't know how practice is going, just loves football. And uh, that's what we're looking for in a lot of our guys, you know, the guys that love football and the guys that want to be here at Troy. And we think those are the guys that we need to recruit and get here because uh, it's so important for, for players to to come to a place and, and really buy in and be all in at that place. And that's what's exciting about Caleb. Next is another guy that's the same way, Scott Taylor Renfro. He's a kicker from here in Troy, Alabama, Pike Liberal Arts, 6'1", 175 kicker. Uh, my, myself, having kids play on that team, my own kids, I got a chance to see him a whole lot. Uh, very impressed. The first year I got here, he came to our camp and did well. Uh, and anytime you can get a kid from here right in, right in the city of Troy and hometown guy, uh, it's exciting. And uh, it was really, really exciting to, to offer him a scholarship and him accept and uh, just a special moment. Uh, he, 81% of his kickoffs were in the end zone this year. Uh, He's a, he's a guy that I think is continuing to improve. I've seen him get stronger and get better as, as in the year and a half or two that I've been here. Ranked as the number 15 kicker in the country by 247 and the top 100 player in our state. Uh, and he's going to be a great player here. He also plays basketball and baseball for the Patriots over there at Pike Lib. Helped lead in the back to back baseball state championship. So, very good athlete, a very good kid, awesome kid, TKG. And we're just thrilled to get, to get Scott Taylor here on board. Next is Sterling Roberts, who's a 6'1", 205-pound safety from Stark, Florida, Bradford High School. Uh, this kid is extremely impressive. Recorded 77, 74 tackles there at Bradford, a three-star three uh, recruit by 247. Uh, we needed a long, young safety who we think can come in and, and maybe have an impact early. And uh, he's a guy that I thought fit that mold. And getting to know him uh, over time, I knew he was a great fit here. And again, he's another guy that stayed true to us. Uh, people were coming in late on him, trying to get him to look at other options. And again, he never wavered. So excited about getting Sterling here and uh, looking forward to uh, to watching him grow as a player. He played basketball as well on a weightlifting team in high school, which, you know, a lot of, a lot of schools around the country don't have weightlifting teams. But, you know, when you're on that team and, and you're participating, that, that's a good sign as a football coach, knowing that kid's going to enjoy getting in the weight room. Next is a uh, offensive lineman named Ivan Schultz. Uh, Ivan is a 6'4", 295-pound old lineman from Mobile, St. Paul's, two-time state champion there. Perfect 15-0 season this year. Uh, rated as a number 11 center in the country, top 35 player. Uh, another guy that played in the Alabama Mississippi All-Star game, uh, number 15 center in the country, listed by some. So uh, he's the son of uh, Roger Schultz, who obviously, and uh, his wife Paige, who obviously Roger played at Alabama, was a great player. Um, just excited to get Ivan on board. He's a really smart guy. I think that his best football is still ahead of him. He's also played baseball and track in high school. And I think now watching him uh, commit year round to training and so forth, and you're going to see him continue to get better. Uh, he's a guy that I think the future here uh, is going to be very bright for him. You know, he's a guy that can play all three positions in the O line um, and uh, will be a great fit here. So, really excited about getting Ivan on board. Uh, next is another receiver, Deshaun Stoudemire, 6'1", 175-pound receiver. He's actually from Stone Mountain, Georgia, played at Stevenson High School, a big-time program over there in Georgia. Uh, we got him out of Iowa Western, um, caught 38 passes there, um, the number 15 JUCO wide receiver in the country, three-star per ESPN, number eight JUCO wide receiver per 247. So a guy that's, that's, that's – uh, Really impressive. And the best thing about him, I think, his ball skills really jump out to me. The guy has unbelievable hand-eye coordination. You see tons of one-hand catches, tons of uh, throws that are behind him where he makes the catch. Uh, just really, really uh, impressive guy on film. And, you know, getting to know him, he wanted to get closer to home, being from Atlanta, Georgia, playing offense that throws it. So we were a great fit for him and uh, excited about him. In high school, he ran track and played baseball there at Stevenson, and which is an accomplishment to be able to do that at a place like Stevenson. So we're extremely excited to get Deshaun here, and he'll be here in January as well. Next is a running back from Tuscaloosa named Damian Taylor, Tuscaloosa County High School. Uh, he's actually from Northport, Alabama, I guess, would be the best, the, the, uh, the correct way to say it. He ran for 1,800 yards and 17 touchdowns and no fumbles his senior year. So uh, in the league he played in against the Thompsons, the Hoovers, the Spain Parks of the world, 
uh, some of the better teams in our in our state. Uh, that's outstanding. And he was a finalist for the seven eight back of the year. Uh, he's a guy that that I think is a, he's I think his his future here is extremely bright. I think his best football is still ahead of him. One of the hardest working kids I know that we've recruited. Uh, works year round on his game. Uh, really impressive. Top one twenty five running back. Number eighty player in the state of Alabama according to two four seven. Uh, so we're excited to get Damien. He can catch the football. He's physical. Uh, he can score uh, from from everywhere on the field. So I think you know, obviously for us, adding some running backs, we signed three. You know, not having a lot of tight ends, uh, those running backs are huge, uh, huge for us because they have to play on special teams. And obviously, you know, with with us trying to play some tempo offense, it's good. You got to have more than more than two or three backs. So uh, the future is bright at that position. And uh, Damian uh, is going to is a guy that we're really excited about. Next is another running back, a transfer from actually Florida State, but he's from Beauregard High School here in, in Alabama, Opelika, LaDamian Webb, 5'8", 190, 90 pounds. He was Mr. Football here in the state of Alabama several years ago, rated as number three junior college back out of Jones Community College. Uh, in high school, you know, his, he's legendary in this state. I mean, he had 53 touchdowns and over 3,242 3, yards. Uh, he's a guy that led, led Beauregard to a state championship. Uh, just a really compact, powerful running back, very competitive. I've known LaDamian a long time, uh, recruited him at some other schools, and uh, we are just thrilled to death to get him here. He will add uh, some depth to that room. Obviously, you can never have too many. Last year, I think we were down to one running back, one scholarship running back. This year, we stayed more healthy, but there were some games we were banged up and down to two guys. So um, you can never turn down really good players, and we're excited to have LaDamian in our program now. Next, uh, another running back, Jairus Williams from Mobile, Blunt High School. Rushed for 1,300 yards, 13 touchdowns. Only, only had 109 carries, so that yard per carry is 12.4, which is extremely impressive. Uh, he also caught 12 passes. This guy is versatile. Could probably play in the slot if we want him to, but he's in a, such an impressive running back. I think he'll, and as much as we throw it to our running backs, I think he'll fit in great in our offense. He's ranked as the number 23 running back in the country by ESPN and number 12 player in the state of Alabama, four-star recruit by 247, a guy that I think is, uh, is extremely uh, powerful, uh, can score from anywhere on the field, obviously played in a good league down there in Mobile, and, and they had a great year, uh, went deep into the playoffs. He also played in the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star game, also runs track. Uh, really impressive young man when you get to know him and thrilled to death to get him here uh, with us. So, that's kind of a rundown, just some highlights of our players. Um, this class, as I mentioned, uh, one of the most impressive classes is our second class now that we've signed since I've been here. Um, and uh, I think we addressed our needs. Um, we left some room by signing 18. We left some room for some guys maybe late or even in the next day or two. Uh, we'll continue to, uh, to look for uh, good players. And if somebody can help our football team, then we will add them. Um, you know, a different year with COVID. Uh, Still, you know, in our exit meetings, met with all the seniors. I did. Um, I think most all will come back. Um, and the ones that are graduating and maybe have jobs lined up, I think some of the, a couple of those guys will move on. We may have one that, that, that wants to uh, try and decide if he's going to try the NFL or not. But um, the feedback's been great. And I think that's an impressive group. They want to come back and, and looking forward to a 2021 season that will have basically our whole team back and adding some pieces to the puzzle which is exciting. So uh, we love what we've done with this class. We're not really done yet, but um, things can change in the next day or two. And then we'll still have uh, some room maybe to add some guys even after spring. Uh, so looking forward to this group and getting them here on campus. I think we'll have uh, seven or eight early enrollees, which is always great. They get to go through spring ball and also our uh, conditioning program. So we're looking forward to getting those guys here in January. And again, just really thrilled with this class. Okay, take any questions at this time. Well, Coach, you mentioned uh, um, a group of guys that are going to come back next year. Yep. But with the seniors, you have a few senior wide receivers. Mm -hmm. How important was it to get a you know a group of new receivers in to kind of you know uh, start their days with uh, uh, with the team? Yeah, that's a great question because you know before the season, before they made the announcement that that kids were allowed to come back after, even though they were seniors or that, that really nobody's year counted this year, no matter how old they were. 
uh, we were preparing to lose all those guys. And uh, so that's the way we recruited. And once we got you know, a, co a class committed, especially at the wideout position, we're very happy with them. And we wanted to make sure that, that we had um, get, you know, guys ready to go. And now I feel like most all of those guys will come back um, and that'll just add depth to us. And uh, you know, that's exciting because we play a bunch of receivers, we play fast, we snap the ball a lot. Uh, and that allows us to have plenty of depth. And, uh, you know, we weren't going to turn down really good players. Uh, we were trying to figure a way to, to make it work. It's still a juggling act. act. The roster management uh, piece of this year is going to be extremely uh, difficult. It's going uh, to be something that, that we really have to uh, navigate through. And first time we've ever gone through anything like this. But um, obviously, you're always planning for guys that are leaving. And that's the way we recruited. But uh, if, if these guys stay around, we're not going to let – we're not going to turn good players away. Uh, and uh, we're going to make sure that we have a, uh, a lot of depth at that position, and I think we will. Chip, sure. how does the roster management work with the new guys coming in? Will there have to be more red shirts if, if a lot of the seniors come back? You know, that's a, that's, that's a good question. I, I don't think I'll be able to answer that question until we get them all here together. Um, I, I will say this, that, you know, this is one of those situations where it's it's it, nobody's been through this before. So I'm sure there's going to be some 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 things come up, some hurdles that we're going to have to overcome. I do think that it, it'll help our roster become stronger in one way or another. Uh, you know, you never know about kids deciding maybe that they don't want to play anymore uh, because of whatever reason they've been injured, you know, or they've got a job opportunity or whatever, and then. Uh, sometimes kids just decide maybe they have a, they want to try another opportunity, and that's okay too. But um, the feedback we're getting is that most of our guys want to be back here with us, most all of them really, to be honest with you. And, and the guys that if they've got an opportunity to play at the next level, then we're going to encourage them to do that. But, you know, after they get an evaluation back from the NFL and from different things to make sure we advise them the best we can. Uh, but I look for a lot of guys to come back. And like you mentioned, the roster – management piece is going to be tricky for sure but it's one it's something we're going to have to uh kind of kind of go through slowly and um and, and then make some of the best decisions we can for our team Stephen gunner doesn't have a question all right since you called me out coach i'll uh <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll ask you about LaDamian, a guy who's yeah. – uh, the running back room at Troy, obviously since you've been there, has been pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, Kamani is a, is a young guy. We know what – you know, mm -hmm. seeing what he's able to, to accomplish. Then you bring in a guy like LaDamian mm -hmm. who has been at several programs, uh, as you said, uh, set records here at, in the state. Right. Um, is, is he the type of guy that can be uh, a workhorse type of guy? Or, I mean, what all can you do with somebody like LaDamian Webb? Well, I think LaDamian is, is a very talented guy. I think, obviously, that's, that's well documented. Um, I think LaDamian, LaDamian is a guy that brings some, some experience to the room. Um, you know, obviously, we're very excited about the guys we have in that room. And as I mentioned uh, before, you know, the way our roster is set up, not having a, a lot of tight ends, really, we got two, I would say, then, then these running backs have a lot of responsibilities other than just handing the football to them. Uh, we throw it to them a lot. I think we finished, the two running backs finished fifth and sixth on our team in receptions this year. So they have to be uh, multi-talented. LaDamian is, is one of those guys that will do that as well. Known him for a long time, always been impressed with him. Um, and, you know, when, when he decided he was going to look at other opportunities, it was a no-brainer for us because, you know, he brings a skill set to that room that, that you know, that is a very, very impressive. Uh, I will say that that room as a whole is very impressive. I mean, when you talk about Kamani Vidal and the type of season he had as a freshman, um, I'm extremely excited about the future with him. Uh, Jamontez Woods came on uh, and really came on toward the end of the year. So you, you take those three, a veteran guy like BJ, if we get him back, you know, obviously BJ uh, was not uh, as healthy as he wanted to be. Uh, that's something he and I have talked a lot about. I think, I think he's leaning to come, coming back and trying to get his body back in shape. And the best thing about BJ is he's a veteran guy. You know, he's got experience, and that's always important uh, to have an ex to experience. If you look at the better teams in our league right now, they're, they're, they're senior-laden teams, guys that have played a lot of snaps. So that's, that's something that's always impressive. Um, um, and then you still have the opportunity to have, you know, DK Billingsley and Charles Strong and, and, uh, and several guys there in that room that I think will make our team better, whether or not they carry the ball. Um, you know, or we throw it to them, or they're helping us in special teams, whatever it is, it's, it's great to have competition. And uh, we'll see how that all plays out. 
head coach was Scott Taylor Renfro. He's a guy that I know spends a lot of his time going to camps and, mm-hmm. and clinics to work on his game. Talk about how important that is for a kicker to you know, not only work on his on his yeah. craft, but you know seek the advice of a lot of uh, you know you know either former kickers or current kickers. Well, I think, you know, kickers are, are a different breed for sure. You know, those guys, uh, and you got to be, you know, most of the time when they're making big kicks or game-winning kicks or game-tying kicks, whatever they are, so they have to be wired a little different. Uh, and those guys have to be self-motivated, I think, to be really good. And you see the best kickers in the country. Um, they, they they get involved in camps all over the country, and they go with these, these kicking experts or these guys that spend their entire career coaching kickers. Uh, Scott Taylor's no different. He and his family committed to to helping him do that from an early age. And he has, uh, in my mind, improved maybe as much as anybody I've seen from the first year I got here. And obviously having kids in that school and, and going to a lot of those games, I've seen him grow and, and uh, you know become physically stronger. And, and it's shown in, in his kicking um, ability and so forth. But uh, this kid works extremely hard. I've been impressed with him since I met him the first time how he handles himself. He loves Troy. He grew up loving Troy. Uh, he's he's a true TKG, and uh, I think he'll be one of the best kickers in the country before it's all said and done, and, and we're glad we got him, and, and he'll add an element to our team for sure, and we'll see how quickly he gets he gets on the field, but uh, we're extremely excited to have him in our program. Coach, when you when you uh, recruit a guy like Schultz, who yep. obviously the blood, bloodlines there, his dad was a great player at Alabama. Yep. Um, is, is there a position is, as O line a position where having those bloodlines is there a certain position that if your if your dad was a star player, does it help you any more than another position? I mean, he seems like a guy who's already ready to potentially come in and, and make an impact very early on. Yeah, I, I think there is something to that. I mean, obviously they grow up around the game and learning the game. And, and, you know, Roger was a great player. And Roger spent some time here at Troy. And we're very familiar with him. And, and you know, getting to know Ivan, I think Ivan's a guy that, that, you know, has played baseball. He's done some track. He's not been a year-round football training guy his whole career. Uh, what I liked about him is what his head coach, Steve Mass, said about him. You know, he said, Chip, he's, he's, he's a tough guy. He's smart. He understands football. He's continuing to get better and better, and we saw that improvement from junior to senior year. And he can play center, he can play guard. Uh, he's an intelligent guy. He understands fronts already. He understands technique, and probably a lot of that has to do with with obviously being the son of a guy that that did it uh, really well at a high level. So uh, for us, we thought it was a no-brainer, a steal for us to get him. How quickly he can play, you know, it's it's tough to predict that. I mean, the jump from from high school to Division One football is a big jump, without a doubt. And some guys are able to do it. We had several freshmen this year that did it. Our right tackle was a true freshman. Our One of our receivers played a ton was a true freshman. So there's no question it can be done. Sometimes O-line's a tougher deal be, uh, to do it because of the physicality and the size of the kids that we played. I think Derek Graham would tell you that. You know, he got thrown into the fire, I guess, week two or three. and. And we just let him roll with it and grow. And he, he made mistakes, but I, by the end of the year, he was playing very well for us. So um, Ivan's a guy that definitely would have some potential to, to, to maybe get get an opportunity here pretty quick. But, you know, it'll all depend. We got five starters coming back in the O-line. Uh, so uh, we'll just see how quickly he can uh, adjust to the college football game. Coach, you know, in an mm-hmm. era of the transfer portal where everything is changing, mm-hmm. You're not only recruiting high school kids, but it seems like you're also, you know, um, at least looking at the portal for for transfers. Talk about that process, and mm-hmm. and is it is it is it kind of a sense of pride knowing that you guys are you know able to get some of these these transfers from big time programs? Yeah, I think so. I think it's it's a college football is different than it's ever been, and the transfer portal obviously is a factor in that. And I think for us, what what we were trying to do is we we felt like we had certain needs we need to improve in certain areas and certain positions, and well, you know the opportunity to try to get an older guy, and a lot of times these some of these guys that that we bring in that are transfers, we have some sort of connection to them, whether it's through a high school coach that we know, so we know a lot about the kid, or or maybe we recruited the kid and he went to maybe a power five school and got there and said, you know what, this may not be for me, and decided he either wanted to get back closer to home or for whatever reason closer to family. Really, a lot of factors are in that. Um, I do think the transfer portal is something that we're still learning as college coaches how to, how to manage and how to deal with. Um, 
if you look at it, there's a ton of kids in it, and there's not that many scholarships out there. So I think it's somewhat uh, of a risk as a as a player sometimes because you may not you may not have what you think you have, and so to speak. But uh, for a lot of guys, it has paid dividends for, and I th- hopefully that's going to help us. These you know these these guys that we got this year that are transfers, they're coming from you know some power five schools where they want a, a different opportunity whether it's more playing time whether it's uh, the opportunity playing a different style of offense or different style of defense and uh, you know I think each case is different but we we understood pretty quick going into this season that we had to address some needs and add to what we have and we and we feel really good about what we've done there and I think there'll be uh, maybe some other opportunities too uh, before it's all said and done.